What value do you provide? If I asked you that question, how would you respond? You might start listing off a bunch of features that your product or service has. Maybe you're gonna list the benefits to your customers. I would bet you probably answer that question differently every single time you're asked. Well, I would like you to consider this quote from Harvard Business School. If a company does not communicate and execute on its strategy, it does not have a strategy. And in this video, I want to focus on the communicate part of that quote. By the end of this video, you're going to walk away with a step-by-step -step framework for understanding and communicating the value that you provide. Let's get started. Your value proposition is at the very top of your strategic pyramid. And I promise you, it is a lot more than the couple of sentences that you may have written down a couple of years ago. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through an exercise that we call value mapping. Value maps are a vehicle to help you go from strategy formulation to strategy execution. They show you exactly how you stand out and what value you have to your target customers. And there are five steps to value mapping. Step number one, identify your value drivers. Step number two, rank your value drivers. Step number three, self assess. Step number four, complete a gut check. And then step number five, optimize for value. By the end of this process, you're gonna have a clear understanding of your company's value to the marketplace and what specifically drives that value in the eyes of your customers. You're also going to have an action plan of exactly where you need to focus to increase the perception of the value that you provide. And finally, you're going to have ways to actually measure success. Now, before I dive in and walk you through each step, let's first define what value actually means. And for that, we got to go on a field trip. As you can see, I'm at a park here. What's the value of a park? Well, if you're really passionate about getting people together in the community, community engagement is really a great value proposition here, right? You can have people come around, you can meet together, it's free. Well, what if you value health and wellness? A park is also a really, really great option for you. You can go on walks, you can do runs, you can set up little sports games with some of your friends. It's a really great, valuable location for you to engage in health and wellness activities. Finally, what about if you like nature and recreation, you wanna just be outside? Well, parks are obviously a great place to do that too. So what's my point here? Well, what I'm trying to show you is that the value that your customers get from your offering will be different based on perspective. Also, the situation that that person is in has a huge impact on the perceived value that they're receiving. Let's take this tree, for example. Pretend there's a rope around this tree and somebody is standing in front charging $5 to sit under it. That's absolutely absurd, isn't it? Why would anyone ever pay to sit under a tree? I sure wouldn't. But right now in Northern California, it's over 100 degrees outside. If you can tell, I'm sweating, I'm uncomfortable. If I had to wait at this park for one hour, all of a sudden, I might spend $5 to be able to sit under the shade where it's gonna be a lot cooler. So hopefully you understand that in this example, my current situation is influencing my perceived value of the shade. I want you to keep this in mind when we go through the five steps to building out your value map. Step number one, identify your value drivers. Value drivers define what motivates your customer's willingness to pay for your product or service. Willingness to pay is simply how much are they willing to pay to receive the value that you're providing. What I recommend is getting the team together and listing out seven to 10 value drivers. These are the actual components of your product or service that provide value to the customer. Now, if you end up with a list way bigger than seven to 10, I want you to start cutting things out until you get to the 10 or seven most important ones. So here's an example for a marketing automation company that we did a while back. Alrighty, so here are their value drivers. Grow your reach locally and globally, reduce friction for your customers, communicate directly with your customers and own your audience, actionable insights, see your audience engagement in real time, strategic planning and execution, standard of excellence and SOPs, 
And then finally, campaign reporting. Easily see the effectiveness of your campaigns in dollars. Now, once you have your value drivers all written out, it's time to rank those value drivers. And how I want you to rank these is by order of importance to your customer. Number one being the most important one, and then number 10 being the least important one. Now, I wanna clarify here, I'm not saying that it's not important, it's just the least important of that list of seven to 10 that you made. So let's continue with the same example. Alrighty, so this is how the marketing automation company ranked their value drivers. Number one was communicate directly with your customers and own your audience. Number two, grow your reach locally and globally. Number three, reduce friction for your customers. Number four, campaign reporting. Easily see the effectiveness of your campaigns in dollars. Number five, actionable insights. So see your audience engagement in real time. Number six, strategic planning and execution. And then finally, number seven was standard of excellence and SOPs. So this allows us to move on to step number three, self-assess. With your value drivers all organized by level of importance to the customer, it's time to go to all of your revenue teams and have them score what they believe your performance as an organization is for each one of those value drivers. The ranking system is very simple. One to five, one poor, five excellent. And then finally, you're going to round up and average all of the scores across all of the revenue teams. So then that way you have an average number for each value driver. Let's continue with the same example. Alrighty, so for this company, they decided to have their leadership team, account executive team, and account management teams all score themselves based on how well the company is performing for each value driver. As you can see on the very first left-hand side, we have the overall rating. And on the very left-hand side, the value drivers, we have them all listed out in order of importance. And you can see at a high level here, for the most part, they agreed, but there's some areas where it seems like the account executives were ranking things higher than the rest of the team were. So this is a good way to get a visual representation of how aligned the teams are. Now, have the entire team on your side rank each one of these, combine them into an overall rating so you can give yourself a number for each value driver because that's gonna lead us into the very next step. Step number four, complete a gut check. Now it's simply time to check how well your team did by actually asking your customers. Go figure, right? They're an important part of this value equation. So what I suggest you do is actually create a survey and give it to all of your customers, asking them to score how the company is doing on each one of those value drivers. Here's what the survey should look like. The main survey question should be, how would you describe your experience with value driver with company name? And the scoring is one through five. One, not good. Two, just okay. Three, good. Four, wonderful. And five, exceptional. Create one of these survey questions for each value driver that you've listed. Now, once you have all of your survey responses in, you're gonna put them together in what we call a value map. Get excited, this is what we've been working for all of this time. Let me go through an example of a value map. Alrighty, so on the Y axis, you can see we have each value driver in order of importance, the number one most important one all the way up at the top. And then on the X axis, we have the score of your company's performance from one to five. This is based on the results that you got from the customer survey. As you can see in this example, the company got a four for their number one value driver, which is communicate directly with your customers and own your audience. But their second value driver, the second most important one, grow your reach locally and globally, they only got a two. And then the third most important one, reduce friction for your customers, they got a three which is just good. As you can see, the next two, they did really well. They got fives. And then for strategic planning and execution, they got a three again, and then they got a four for standard of excellence and SOPs. So looking at this allows you to get a clear picture on where you need to focus to improve your results. So once you've built this for yourself, take a look and see where are we lacking. So then that way you can put all of your focus on that. Now that leads us to our next step. 
Step number five, optimize for value. Once you have your value map complete, it's time to prioritize each individual value driver based on importance and where your customers ranked you for that value driver. I recommend starting up at the very top to the most important value drivers and work your way down. It's gonna depend on how your customer scored you in that specific value driver. Let's pull up our example value map again. It's clear that we should focus on the value drivers, grow your reach locally and globally, and reduce friction for your customers. And the reason why is simply because these are both high importance value drivers for this organization, but their customers rank them pretty low compared to the other ones on fulfilling these value drivers. So this is a clear area of focus that has to be done for the organization. So once you've done this for yourself, ask yourself the following questions. Number one, what activity supports value creation? So take a look at your organization and figure out what do we have to do to fulfill that value driver for our customer? Now, sometimes it's because we're lacking something. Other times it's because we're not communicating something. Both of those could be true or just one of them. You need to explore and figure out which it is. The second question to ask yourself is who is responsible for communicating that we've either improved that value driver or that that value driver already exists. So that way we have a clear person or team or group that is responsible for improving our score with that value driver. Question number three, how are we gonna measure success? Of course, you can redo the survey in three months from now, but another way to do this is to look at what KPIs line up with that value driver and focus on improving those KPIs. And it might be something like usage. It could be uh, based on what people are telling you their number one priorities are when they're going through the sales process. You gotta look through the data that you're tracking and see what makes the most sense to be able to track to make sure that you're being successful. From here, it's pretty simple. You want to align the team or person who's responsible for that really important value driver that you're working on with actually fixing that area. So let's go back to our example here. So let's look at the number one value driver that we actually scored pretty well on in this example. Communicate directly with your customer and own your audience. Well, we need to be making sure that the sales team is doing a really, really good job of communicating that that is the value that's experienced by our customers. If not, we could be misaligned with the value drivers that are important and our messaging that we're delivering to potential customers. Now let's go down a bit and look at value driver, grow your reach locally and globally. Well, once we've improved our efforts here, or if it's a communication issue, either way, marketing should probably run a campaign either to all customers or even top of the funnel potential customers, maybe both, communicating that this is a value driver that they can experience by using your product or service. And if there's big updates or changes that you made so that value driver is stronger, communicating that as well. Listen, the more value you're providing, you're increasing your customer's willingness to pay, which directly correlates to top line revenue increase. That's why it's so important that you do your top most important value drivers incredibly well and make sure that the entire revenue generating team is communicating that to potential customers and existing customers so then that way everyone sees the value that they're getting from your product and service. That's all I got for you today. That was the value mapping exercise. If you found that valuable, make sure to like and subscribe so I know to make more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comment down below and I'll talk to you soon.